everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be counting down my 10 favorite flea markets finds. One of you guys have asked me to make a video about what dolls can you find at flea markets. Well, the answer is you can find anything at a flea market. It's just whether, you know, it'll actually be there or not. The, in, the possibilities are endless with flea markets. So instead of making a video about what can you find at the flea market, because again, you could really find anything, I'm going to share with you guys my 10 favorite finds that I've ever found um, at flea markets. I'm also going to include thrift stores and yard sales in this list to make it more complete because I do frequent all three or I did frequent all three pre-COVID. So anyway, with that being said, let's get started. Number 10 on my list is my American Girl Elizabeth doll. Now this was the first American Girl doll that I ever found out at the flea market. I actually did find her at the flea market. She was $25 and I wanna say I found her in 2009 or 2010 and her hair had been cut off. She had no hair. So at that time, I was a young, poor doll collector. I got her for $25, and what I did is I bought her a new wig from Ingle Pup, which you guys have seen me talk about this company before, and I re-wigged her, and I ended up buying her outfit from American Girl. Of course, she's wearing Felicity's work outfit right now, but I got her original pink outfit and earrings from AG, and I ended up I think in total I put $60 into her, but at that time to get an Elizabeth doll was gonna be a minimum of $90 used and then buying one brand new of course was even more expensive or she might have been retired by that point. She might have been a retired doll at that point, I can't remember. But anyway, I was so thrilled to find her because at that time American Girl was one of my number one focuses in my doll collecting and she was the first one that I really found out at a thrift store flea market. I found her at the actual flea market. Now my flea market is swimming with American Girl dolls all the time and of course everybody wants $60 a piece for them and they don't even sell for that on eBay anymore. But she's still a favorite in my collection because of what she meant to me. My actual first doll video ever was I made a video changing her wig or removing her wig. Um, I tried to find it for you guys so I could put it, because it wasn't on YouTube, I had posted it to my blog, but it's been deleted now, it's not there anymore unfortunately, but that was my very first foray into doll video making. But anyway, that is my number 10 favorite flea market find. Number nine on my list is my Little Miss Singing Mermaid doll. And I want to say I paid $2 for her. I think that's right. I got her at the flea market too. She's a flea market find. The reason that this one is so special to me is because I woke up that morning and I was very intentional with my thoughts. And I said, I want to go to the flea market and I want to find a Little Miss doll. Now I didn't necessarily want a Little Miss Singing Mermaid, but I wanted a Little Miss doll because I love Little Miss dolls. I think they're so cute. They're very inexpensive, but for me, I grew up with these dolls and so I really wanted to um, find another one for my collection and I found her and so my good thoughts and my good intentions and my speaking positivity worked that day and I got a little Miss Singing Mermaid and this has been a couple years ago. I actually have a video about her on my channel from those 80s dolls so you can check that out if you want to but she is my number nine most favorite flea market find. My number eight favorite flea market find. Now this one was actually found at a thrift store for $3. This is an original Chrissy doll with her original blue dress and her hair is in perfect condition. She was very clean when I found her and I was really excited to find her because at the time when I found her, she was another big focus of my collecting. So, you know, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, the big focus of my collecting was vintage vinyl and American Girls. And this was one of my favorite dolls to collect. Still is, I still have a large collection of Chrissy dolls. And I was so excited to find her because she had the blue dress, she had her belt, she had her shoes, which she's not wearing now, but I do have her shoes. Um, so she was complete and for three bucks, I was elated to find her in the condition she was in. Cause normally, when you find a Chrissy doll, they're very dirty. They've got the eye mold problem. Um, she didn't have any of that. I didn't really have to do much to her uh, to make her display worthy. And so she was a really exciting find for me when I found her. Number seven on my list is this beautiful Gotts doll. And I found her at the flea market. I cannot remember how much I paid for her, but she wouldn't have been 
you know, more than $5. She was in pretty rough shape when I found her. I totally redid her hair. I dressed her in American Girl clothes because she was naked. She was very dirty. She's got this um, white cloth body. So you can see also she's not got the um, full vinyl arm. She does have some soft arms. I don't honestly even know what this doll's name is, but I think she has the prettiest face. I really adore her. And ever since I found her, um, she's been part of my collection because she's really gorgeous and I really love having her. And like I said, I spent all that time cleaning her up. She's a little smaller than American Girl size, but she is able to wear the American Girl clothes. So she is definitely one of my all time favorite flea market finds. Number six on my list is this BFC Ink Yuko doll, and she is one of the more hard to find BFC Ink dolls. I found her at the flea market. She was $8, so she was a little bit pricier than some of the other things at the flea market, but she was in great condition. She had her full outfit. Um, her hair was not too bad. BFC Ink dolls have a really horrible, poor quality hair, and so sometimes when you find them, the hair is just... Oh, it's a nightmare. Um, but she actually had decent quality hair. And when I bought her, I actually considered selling her for a little while. But then I decided, you know what? And there's no way I want to sell this doll because I love BFC Ink dolls. And they're really just hyper, um, you know, articulated, really pretty dolls. I think it's a shame they stopped making them. I did do a video about them. If you guys want to check it out, you can search my channel um, and I talk about them a little bit more. But really gorgeous dolls and picked her up at the flea market. There's actually two favorite booths that I have at the flea market. Both of them sell toys. And this came, one is a lady and one is a man. And this actually came from my favorite guy's booth at um, our flea market because he just has like piles of dolls all the time. So um, this is my, my, um, $8 find. Number five on my list of favorite flea market finds, and this goes for flea markets, yard sales, thrift stores, are Disney Animators Collection dolls. And you can see this one I got at Goodwill. She's got her price sticker still $2.99, and I have not had a chance to clean her up yet. As a matter of fact, when I bought her, the lady at the register said, her hair is a mess. You know that, right? And I said, oh yeah, I'll be able to fix it up. I love fixing doll hair, and her hair really is a mess. And I got her over a year ago, y'all, and I have not cleaned her up yet. But I need to because, um, yeah, she's poor thing. But she has her full outfit, her shoes. But I love Disney Animators Collection dolls. And I have a large collection of them. And most of them have either come from the flea market, the thrift store, or from a yard sale. I think they're beautiful dolls. I'm obsessed with Disney anyway. I think this is one of the best collectible dolls on the market that is, you know, in a, like, less expensive but it still is really a lot of fun and really unique. I really love these dolls. And so that's something that I always look for when I'm out at the flea market or I'm out thrifting is I'm looking for Disney animators dolls and I will buy them regardless of who they are or if I have them already or what. And sometimes I clean them up and I'll sell them. Um, sometimes I just redress them because there's also so many amazing clothes for Disney animators dolls. So half the fun of them is um, redressing them and there, there's so many beautiful outfits for them out there. But they are my number five pick for my favorite flea market finds. My number four favorite find is this white bodied Gotts Rebecca doll that I found actually last year. This is the last good find I've had. I think I found her in February right before quarantine started. Also from my favorite guy at the flea market. Also $8. He kind of charges $8 for 18 inch dolls. That's sort of his go to. But um, I have a full video about restoring her on my channel. I was absolutely elated to find this doll because there's so much history um, with the Gotts company and with American American girl and she's got that American girl body. She was manufactured at the same time. Um, her sister, what's her name? Rowena or Romina is the actual like Samantha face. She's the American girl face that they ended up going with when they did American girl dolls and she came out at the same time. And so I really adore this doll and the fact that she had her original outfit. I added the tights and the shoes, but she had her original dress and she was in pretty you know, wasn't great condition, but it wasn't bad either. She cleaned up really, really well. And I have to tell you guys this because I think it's funny. Um, all the dolls are sitting over off camera and my husband's handing them to me um, as we get to them. And as he handed her to me, he said, you need to fix her hair. It looks like crap. He didn't use the word crap, but I edited it for you guys. 
was, but I thought it was funny because he didn't want her to look like crap on camera. But anyway, so I fixed her hair a little bit, but her hair is still a little frizzy, but I did a lot of work to it. And I think she came out looking okay. And she is, you know, one of my favorite flea market finds to date because of just all those reasons that I said. And you can check out the video where I did her full restoration um, if you're interested and you can see kind of what she went from to, to here, how she is now. Number three on my favorite flea markets find is Nancy Kappas. Now she would be number one, except this is a little bit of a cheat. I bought her on shopgoodwill.com back before uh, that it was really big and a lot of people knew about it. Got her for $5 on shopgoodwill.com. Now, why is that important? This doll sells anywhere from $450 to $900. She is a super hard to find, super coveted Nancy doll, and it is because she's Nancy Coppice, and Coppice means layers, and her hair is layered. And they didn't make a whole lot of these dolls with the layered hair. And so, it's funny because I first did a blog post about her when I got her and I talked about how I got her for $5 and y'all, I had all these vultures reaching out to me trying to buy her from me for $100 or $200 because she was worth, at that time, she was selling for even more than she sells now, like minimum $600, $650. It kind of made me mad after the fact that I had all these, um, all these vultures doing that. I just call them vultures because that's what they were. I didn't know though, here's the bad thing. I knew she was a Nancy, I knew I wanted a Nancy because I was interested in Nancy, but I was learning Spanish and trying to learn all about her and I didn't know as much about her. Um, and I almost, y'all, I almost cut her hair and rerooted her because I was really into rerooting hair then and I did not like this hair and I just wanted a Nancy doll and you couldn't get them here. They were so hard to buy. I almost cut all her hair off and rerooted her so she could look the way I wanted to. If I had done that, I would have completely ruined this doll. I'm glad I didn't. Thank goodness I didn't do that because that would have been like the biggest dolly mistake of my life. Um, but I've grown to really love this face. I've really grown to love the hair because it's, you know, really indicative of the era, the 70s when this doll was made and she's so beautiful. And she would be my number one if I had actually found her at the flea market. But like I said, she's a little bit of a cheat because I, I did get her from Shop Goodwill, so I got her online. But I absolutely adore this doll. She is one of my, she is probably, the best find that I have in my collection. Like the biggest, I guess, step up, a paid $5 versus how much she's worth. Would never sell her, you know, she's one of my favorites, but she's just so wonderful. And that was such a cool, that was such a cool find for me because I had wanted a Nancy so bad and I was just looking everywhere for Famosa dolls because they're marked Famosa on the neck and that's how, you know, I found her listed because most people in this country didn't know that this is a Nancy doll. Most people, I would say, the casual person doesn't know that now. Most of the casual people will know what a Barbie is, but most people are not going to know Nancy unless they're collectors and they've, you know, really been exposed to her. But anyway, she is my number three favorite flea market find. Number two favorite flea market find, and this one actually came from a thrift store, is this Rotoplast Azul Magia Barbie. She is, it means blue magic. She is a Venezuelan Barbie. And I found at the, at the thrift store one day, I think it was four or five bags full of Venezuelan Rotoplast Barbies. Now, what is special about them? They're special because they are made in Venezuela, where most Barbies at the time were made in Taiwan. These Barbies were made in Venezuela because the Rotoplast um, plastic company had the license from Mattel to make the Barbies. And I sold all the other ones because they were all versions of uh, Barbies that, you know, are more common. But this one was a Venezuelan only Barbie, so I kept her. Now the ones I sold, um, I'll show you pictures of those. They actually sold, most of them sold for between $100 and $300. They're very coveted, or they were very coveted at the time I found them and sold them. Uh, because they're harder to get, you know, Venezuela's had some issues lately. They're having some real political turmoil in their country and it's hard to um, get those Barbies. And they're really cool because the makeup is so much more vibrant on the Rotoplast Barbies, on the versions of the Venezuelan versions of the Barbies versus their American counterparts. Now, what I want to show you about Rotoplast Barbies and something that's really interesting is I want you to look at the neck of this Barbie and how really poorly 
manufactured and finished it is. That is a hallmark of the Rotoplast Barbies. Most of the ones that I bought, they have plastic um, seeping around. They had like a plastic collar around their neck. Uh, you can see like how the mold marks, they weren't clean, they weren't cleaned up well, and they're just kind of like that. And some collectors will go in with an X-Acto knife and they'll trim up the extra plastic on these dolls. I didn't want to because I thought that was special and that was the, that's the Rotoplast hallmark and that's how you know that it's a, a real Rotoplast doll. But if you look, um, I'm gonna show you guys this, this is crazy. She's got Venezuela it's backwards um, like the mirror image Venezuela stamped into her neck I don't know if the camera will pick it up but you can see that's Venezuela and when I first found these Barbies I bought them all because they were 80s Barbies and of course being an 80s child I you know had to have them but when I first bought them I thought this is so bizarre they're all marked Venezuela I didn't know any Barbies were made in Venezuela and so going into a um, of course, long internet search, I discovered the tr discovered the true meaning of Venezuelan Barbies. But um, it was really cool just to have them. And you can see, here's how the, the clothing is tagged. Authentico Barbie. And then we've got HO in Venezuela. So they're really, really special. And I kept one for myself, which was her. I also kept this Ken. Now this is not a Rotoplast Ken, but it is a Rotoplast outfit. So the, this one Ken was in the bag with all the Barbies, but he had his Rotoplast outfit on. And so I kept the Ken with the outfits um, and I kept the one Barbie because they're very um, Venezuelan. And I just thought it was so cool. And like how random for me, for a collector, to have found those at the thrift store because they're very special and you know dolls are special for children too like I'm not trying to take all the dolls from the kids at the thrift store but I'm just glad that I was able to find them and I was like I said I sold most of them um, for to other collectors and that was a big way that I used to fund my collecting back in the day is by finding dolls you know at thrift stores and you know um, flea market and stuff and then selling them on eBay because back when I was a teacher there weren't as many extra dolly funds to go around but anyway I absolutely adore these and it was so much fun learning about the Rotoplast Barbies and it was so much fun um, just looking at them sometimes I kind of wish I had kept a few more of them um, but at the time you know I really just wanted to to get the money so I sold them but I did keep her and I'm so glad I did she's only missing one earring too she's missing one earring I've got her other earring but they're really cool dolls and um, just keep your eyes out for that if you ever see a Barbie marked made in Venezuela grab her because she's a rotoplast Barbie and they're super duper special my number one favorite flea market find of all time, which actually came from the Goodwill outlet where dolls are sold by the pound, are my Juanita Perez Prima Perez dolls. These are Juanita's little cousins, and I found both of them in the big toy bin at the Goodwill outlet. I was digging around and I saw a foot and I was like, there's no way, no way, no way. And I pulled her out and I ah oh, my heart almost exploded right there on the spot and i kept digging and there was another one there were two of them there i couldn't believe it and the reason this is my number one favorite find these aren't the most valuable dolls i've ever found you know i paid less than 50 cents for the pair of them because they were sold by the pound and toys were really cheap at the goodwill outlet back when i found these but it's just so um what's the word fate that I would find these two dolls because I was so interested in Juanita Perez dolls, still am, big collector of them, love these dolls so much for my collection. And I just happened to be at the Goodwill outlet that day when these dolls were there and they've never been sold in the United States ever. So someone who used to live in Mexico and then brought these dolls with them from Mexico to the United States ended up donating them to Goodwill and now they are here living their best life in my doll collection. So I got them cleaned up and y'all, that was just the coolest thing. And yes, the, the Rotoplast Venezuelan Barbies, that's cool and how random that they would be there but they're Barbies and so they're a little more common and you know it's not quite as I don't know but these are just such specific 
dolls and that were never sold here in the United States and for me to have found them because you know if I had found these you know six or seven years previous to when I did find them I wouldn't have even known what they were uh, but when I found them I was really into the, I mean I'm still really into these dolls but when I found them I knew exactly what they were and the fact that I was able to get them for you know less than 50 cents and bring them home and clean them up and put them on my doll shelf you know it just it really was fate like it was I was in the right place at the right time and these dolls were meant to come home with me I truly believe that something I say all the time if there's a doll that I want that already exists out there in the world, I'll always say, well, my doll is out there somewhere. She's just at somebody else's house right now. Eventually, she's gonna be coming to my house to live because truly, if you think about it, that's the way it is. If the doll's already been manufactured or produced, and she's out there somewhere and you want her, she's sure a doll. She's just living with somebody else for the time being. But anyway, so that's what the thing with these girls were, was they were living with somebody else and then they were at the Goodwill outlet and now they are um, living here with me in um, South Carolina. So this was my favorite, favorite find of all time. So anyway, guys, one thing that I really want to point out with this video is that doll collecting, you know, I collect so many different types of dolls and I think that flea market thrift store dolls are some of the favorite dolls in my collection. I love them so much. There's something so satisfying about cleaning a doll up and giving her or him a second life and being able to have these stories about the dolls. I mean, I just went through 10 stories with you guys about these dolls that I have. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to me. Um, in the comments below, please let me know what your favorite flea market find has ever been and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not subscribed and we will see you guys in the next video bye bye